Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my SQLize series, where now we're going to be working with models. So in SQLize, a model basically represents a table in your database. So in here, for example, in our schema, if we have code down here, we have tables. We can use a object in SQLize to represent the tables that we have in here that hold our information. And this model informs SQLize about the table it represents, such as the name of the table, the name of its columns, the data types of the columns, and so on. And also, when I say represents, I essentially mean you can interact with the table in your database by using SQLize. So we can query the model, add columns to it, alter it, and so on. And these will be reflected in our database. So if we use SQLize in here and we represent a table that we have in here, and we go back in here, if we add a column, remove a column, it will be reflected in the, in the table that we have in here. And so let's go back in here. And to actually create a model to represent your table, you use the define method. So let's go in here. Let's get rid of this because we know that we were able to connect successfully. And let's create a variable and let's call it const users. And this is essentially going to be a table of users for our application. And the way to actually create or represent a table, you use the define method. So we can do define like this. And so this is essentially saying we want to represent a table in our database. And this method takes three arguments. The first is the model name, which is a string. And so for this video, what we want to do is we want to represent a table called users or user in here. So let's go in here and let's kick a string called user. And I'm actually going to call this use user singular. You'll see it in a second. But now the second attribute or the second um, argument that we take in here is the model attributes, such as the columns. And this is passed as an object. So we pass an object in here and this is where we can specify the columns. So say we have something such as age, username, password, things that a user would have. And now for our user, we want our users to have, for example, as I said, a username. So let's make a key in here called username and then pass that an object. And then something we also want our users to have is a password because we want them to have a username and then a password to sign in. And then some other information, for example, we could say we want them to have an age. And so what you can see a pattern here is that the name of, or the name of each key passed inside the second object or the model attributes will correspond to a column. So if we create this table in here, we will have three columns. So if we go in here and we have a user table, we'll have three columns corresponding to username, password, and age. And so then, of course, because we pass as an object, we can pass in specific things that actually define this column. So for example, we want our username to be a string. So we can specify type like this. And then if we pass in sqlize.datatypes.string, this will show that this will be a string in our database. Or in here, it'll be like var char 45 or whatever it corresponds to in SQLize. So let's go back in. And also we want our password, the type for that will be data types is also gonna be a string. And then our age is also going to be, or our age will not be a string. What this will be is an integer, just like this. And I believe we forgot type right here. So let's just do type. So you can see we have different types of data types. We have string, integer, tons of different ones, all of which we'll be going over in this series. So don't worry about that for now. And now of course, these aren't the only attributes that columns can have. So for example, if we go in here, if we wanted to create a table, so say I clicked in here, right click and said create table. We have all sorts of options. We have primary key. We can make it so it's not null. We can set it to auto increment and things like that. And of course, you can do that with SQLize as well. For example, if we want to use not null, so say, for example, we don't want our user column, or when someone's creating um, a new user for our, or a new row into our table, inserting a new row, we don't want the username to be null. We won't allow that. And so the way to do this is you the key, use the key allow null, and you just set it to false. And something else we can do is set a default value, of course, because of course in here, if we're creating a table, we can set a default value for each column. So in SQLize, of course, you can do the same thing and say for age, we want a default value to be 21, which essentially means if we're creating a user and they don't provide an age, let's just um, set it to be 21. It also should be mentioned that by default, SQLize assumes that the default value of a column is null. So for example, because we don't have um, anything in here, we don't have, um, let me show you, we don't have or actually it wouldn't be allowed in here because we have allow now to false, but say if we just insert a password or we create a user in this table and don't provide a password, then the value will be null 
because by, by default, basically every column has this. Default value, null, unless you special, um, specialize, specify otherwise. So let's get rid of this, click Save. And so of course, there are many more options of which we'll explore later on. But for now, we have set up our model, but how do we actually insert this table into MySQL Workbench? So for example, we can connect to our database, but we haven't actually inserted a table in here. So we're connected to this database SQLized video, but we have no tables. Because what we are essentially doing is we are representing a table, but that table doesn't yet exist in MySQL Workbench, or it doesn't exist in MySQL. And this is where we can use model synchronization. And model synchronization, let me go back into here, is essentially trying to insert the table you defined with SQLize into your database. And to sync the table in our database with our model, we use the method sync. So let's go in here and user, we call user.sync. So this is saying we've defined our table here. We have three columns, all of these different attributes. The table name is going to be user. And now let's sync it up with the connection we have here and insert it into our database. And you may have guessed that once again, this method returns a promise. So what we have to do most methods, basically every method in SQLize, uses a promise because it is promise-based. But anyway, let's just set up our um, then and catch block, which I went over earlier. And so what we can just say here is let's log to the console um, table and model synced successfully. And then if not, so there is an error when this finished, we'll say error syncing the table and model. And then these also, I don't think I showed in the last one, but you can pass data if there's actually data returned. Sometimes there isn't. And then you usually just name this error. It doesn't matter what you call these variables, of course. You could call this soccer and this one pizza. But by convention, you usually call this error. And I think usually data in here. But anyway, we can just specify this. And now let's um, run the program and see what happens. So node and run it. And so you can see we have table and model sync successfully. And this is where one of the first things I want to show you with SQLize is this here, sync, is essentially, is essentially another way of writing out SQL. So if you remember in the first video when I talked about that briefly, we now have create table, if not exists, users. And then we have ID, integer, not null, auto increment. We didn't specify that up here, but I'll get into that in a second. We have username, varchar, not null, which we have right here, SQLize data types dot string, which corresponds to varchar 255. Then we have allow null to be false, which is why we have not null. We have password to be varchar255, which corresponds to string. We have age, which is integer, with a default value of 21. And then you can see some other columns here that I'll get to get into in a second. But for now, just know that they're there. And then we also just have table model sync successfully. So when we tried to create our table in MySQL Workbench, you can see that it was successful because it ran this block here and not this catch one. But now let's go into our MySQL Workbench. Let's refresh here. And now you can see we have this arrow in tables and we have users. And now if we click on here, let's do table inspector, go over to columns, you can see everything corresponds here too. We have username, password, integer, we have default value, and so everything has been synced up. But the first thing you may notice is that the name isn't exactly the same as the one we declared in our define function. For example, this here is plural, users, but if we go back into here, we just specified it to be user. And this is because SQLize automatically pluralizes the model name and uses that as the table name. And this pluralization is, of course, done under the hood by a library called inflection. And this is also a good time to introduce the third argument into our define function. So if you remember, I said this takes three arguments here. The attributes for our columns, the name of the model, and then the third one essentially lets us customize our table even further. So for now, I'm going to go back in here, and I'm just going to drop this table because we're going to sync it again. and then just say drop now. Of course, we can do that with SQLize, which I'll be showing you later, but for now, just drop it. And then let's go back into here. And so of course, I don't know if I forgot to mention it, but our third argument is also gonna be another object. So we have this one, the second one was an object, this one is an object as well. And so it just allows us to customize our table even further. And say, for example, we want to force the table name in our database to equal our model name. So we don't want that pluralization to happen. This can be done in this third object, I called our third argument with a key called freeze table name, and we specify that to true. And if we set this to true, then SQLize will infer that the table name we provided is going to be equal to the model name, or essentially this will be the name that apply, that will show up in MySQL Workbench. And so now let's run the program and check the name. So we do this. You can see once again, now it's create table if not exists user, 
Let's go in here, refresh, and now we have user instead of users. And then as I briefly touched on, or this was from our old one, that's users, let's just open it. It's gonna be the same thing, but table inspector and columns. So you can see by default, SQLize automatically adds the fields created at, which is here, updated at, to every model using the data type, data types dot date. So in here, when we had SQLize dot data types dot integer, it is essentially creating some other columns called SQLize dot data types dot date. And SQLize also manages these automatically as well. So whenever you use SQLize to update or create something, it will set those fields. So if you insert something, it'd be created at, if you update something, it would insert a time for when it was updated at. And of course, once again, this functionality can be disabled by using that third argument. So let's go in here, and another key that we pass can be called timestamps. We just set that to false. And if we set that to false, then these in here will not show up when we create or sync our model with the table in here. But so let's go back in here. Or actually, we should stay in here because there is also one more column that SQLize puts in by default that we didn't define. And that is a primary key. So you can see we have id, int, and you can also see some extra information such as auto increment. And we did not specify a primary key in our table. So if we go back in here, you can see we just have username, password, and age. And just as a quick note, a primary key is a column basically used to uniquely identify each record in a row or, or in a row in a table. So you can't have a duplicate primary key. And so once again, if we don't want to have this column, we need to specify our own primary key. Because if we don't, there's no argument in here to do that, at least that I know of, but what we would have to do is specify our own primary key for this ID to not be placed in here. So let's go back in here and let's create a primary ID. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a column called user ID. So of course, because we want to make a column, we just make it another object inside our second argument to this define function. Let's put a comma in here, get rid of this move in here. And of course, what we want to do is the type of our primary key will be sqlize.datatypes.integer. And then if we want to have it as the primary key, we just use the key, in the object primary key, and set that to true. And then also something that's nice for the primary key to do is auto increment itself or increment itself automatically. And this can be done with the key auto increment. So we set auto increment, and we just set that to true. And so this essentially means that each time a user is inserted, they will be assigned a user ID, and it will start at 1, so the first user will be assigned a user ID of 1 for the first row, and then each time another user is inserted, it will go up by 1, so the second user will be user ID will be 2, and so on. But so now, let's sync and see what happens. So let's go in here, let's run our program with Node. You can see it says table model synced successfully. So let's go in, close out of this, don't need these either. And let's um, click refresh, click on here. Um, let's do table inspector, columns. And you can see actually that we still have created at, updated at, and ID, and not actually the way we updated it. So if we go in here, these weren't actually applied. And this is because the sync method only creates a table if it doesn't exist. It does nothing if the table already exists. And you can see that down here in the SQL it ran, create table if not exists, user. And of course, that table already existed, so it's not going to create it. And so this brings up the question, how do we change an existing table in our database? Well, lucky for us, the sync method takes options in the form of an object. And one of these options is, so if we go in here actually, and one of these options is the key force, which we can set to true. And where if we pass true, it'll drop the table if it already exists and replace it with a new one. So in our case, the user table is already there. So this method will drop this table and then replace it with a table name without the default columns. So let's go in here, let's run this again. Now you can see drop table if exists user, and then it runs create table if not exists user, and fills out our user ID up here, which is an integer, our username to be a string, which is var char 255, not null, all the same here, and then also primary key is set to user ID, and we don't see created at or updated at. So let's go in here. Let's refresh this, close out of this, if I can, and then right click on here, table inspector, columns, and you can see now those are gone. However, there is more than one option, and another option is the alter key. So let's go back in here, and instead of using force to be true, we can use the key alter. And if this is passed true, 
then the current state of the table in the database is modified to match our model. It isn't actually dropped. So if I run this, let's see what the SQL query looks like. You can see it just says alter table, alter table. You can't see anything about dropping. So there's a lot more to this one, but it doesn't actually drop the table and recreate it. But so to show this in action, let's create another column. And so if you remember how to do that, it's up here into our second object here. And then the name of the column, we want it to be wit code rocks, because we know it does. And then we'll set the type and the type will be data types. And it will be, this one will be Boolean because it's gonna be yes or no. Yes, it does rock or no, it doesn't. And let's set a default value for this as well. Because we know default value should be true because if a user doesn't specify if it rocks or not, they just obviously know it does. And now let's save this. Let's go in, let's run it. Table model syncs successfully and you can see alter table here, user, add wit code, tiny int one, which represents Boolean, which is represented by Boolean, let's equalize. And let's see where it did and set default to true. And so now let's go back in here. Let's probably sick of doing this, but let's table inspector columns. And now we have wit code rocks, tiny int, and default value. So we've altered our table. And now let's go back in. And another useful thing to do is say you have more than one table, as most production software does, then you can sync all these at once instead of doing it for each. So instead, say we have a, we have a user table here, say each user writes a post in the application, like, you know, like a Facebook post or something, and we define it and do all that here. Well, instead of doing like sync, force equals true, alter equals true for each one of them individually, we can do this on our SQLize instance. So we could just call sync and set force equal to true, which means it will sync or it'll drop every table and replace it with the new definitions that we have. And of course, this takes um, the same options such as alter, so not just false. So we could also do alter to be true, like this. It'll alter every single table that we have defined. And on a quick side note, you can also drop tables with SQLize using the drop method. For example, if we wanted to drop our user table, and drop essentially just means delete, like get rid of our table. So if we wanted to drop our user table, what we would do down here is we would just use the drop method. So user, sure it is called user, yeah, user dot drop and that would drop our table. And of course it probably returns a promise. So we do then table dropped successfully and all that. But of course, if we want to drop every single table, so not just one of them, we could use our SQLize instance and do SQLize.drop up here. However, something important to note is, it, is that syncing and dropping tables is destructive, meaning that we can lose data that we have signed, saved in our database. But a cool option is you can add a safety check as an argument to the options object that has the key match. So for example, let me get rid of this. Go down here, say we just wanted to get rid of our, our user table, like we wanted to delete it. Well, or sorry, for example, let's go back up to here. Let's use our SQLize instance dot drop. And we passed in force true, or sorry, not force true. What we passed in is the key, pass in an object and the key match. So we were dropping every table, but what we wanted to do is we just wanted to say drop tables that end with the word test. So like this. So this means SQLize will drop every table in the database, but only the ones whose names end in underscore test. And this right here is just a simple regex pattern. So regex consists of a pattern enclosed between slashes. So this slash here and this slash here. And the dollar sign here means match any string with test at the end of it. So it ends with underscore test. So example, if we get a pizza underscore test, that would be dropped. If we had soccer underscore test soccer, that would not be dropped because it doesn't end with that. It has a soccer ahead of it. Anyway, let's just get rid of these. So that's just another safety measure you could do. I wouldn't advise dropping tables, um, but if you were doing it in a way like this, you'll learn to drop um, tables actually more efficiently or do or alter things with SQLize using migrations, which I'll go over in the future. But for now, just I would um, advise against this. It's just a cool thing to know that you can do with SQLize. So just again, because sync and drop are destructive operations, they're not recommended for production level software. And synchronization should be done with migrations. And as I said, don't worry about this for now because we'll be going over this later in the series, but just keep this in the back of your mind. And then another thing we can, cool thing we can do is set um, things to be universal among all tables we represent. So for example, we have freeze table name to be true, which if you can remember, makes it so this name here isn't pluralized, it's just whatever we passed in here. 
say we have tons of different tables like you do in most production software, and we don't want to have to specify this for each one. Well, lucky for us, what we could do is inside our SQLize instance here, we could pass um, a key define, and then we could pass just keys like this in here. So freeze table name true, and that would make it so the table name is the same for every one, instead of in our third options, or in our options object, the third one, passing this for each one, we could just do it here for every single one. And then a final thing I just want to note before I go into the next video is that a, let me get rid of these, is that after a model is defined, it can be accessed using our SQLize instance. So specifically, if we want to access something, we would just do SQLize.models.user, because this is our user in here. However, it is not actually user, it's not this variable up here, but it is user here, or the word you added in define. So it would be dot user. And let's just see what happens if we log this out. So say we just do console.log, sqlize.models.user, press save, run this. You can see we get user. So we know that our user table, it's just, um, just something interesting is that is where SQLize actually stores our models. But so we've created our tables now that we want to use. So we've created them. We've synced them in here so that they match our table, the table that we have, or the model that we've made with SQLize in here matches the table that we have in SQL. But we don't have any data in it. So if we selected things from user, there'd be nothing retrieved because we haven't inserted anything. So that's what we're going to be doing in our next video. So our next video, we're going to be inserting data into our table. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.